what we're aspiring for as trainers is we want our animals to be motivated by seeking for their own satisfaction and joy. We want their behaviors to be drawn out of them through the magnetism, through the pull of reinforcement so that their behavior is done as if they're going through life dowsing, seeking those instances of positive reinforcement that we've set up for them. Now, of course, the horse that's being, that's running toward the barn who's being whipped is also being reinforced. It's not that there's a lack of reinforcement there. It's that they're being reinforced by avoidance. They're trying to get away from being whipped. They're trying to run fast in order to avoid something icky. And so this idea that it all comes down to what you feed To me, this is a little bit of a mantra for me, both in life and in training, that I constantly want to be aware of what is it I'm reinforcing? What is it I'm feeding? What is it I'm paying attention to? Because whatever I'm paying attention to and feeding in the broadest sense, I'm doing air quotes here, you can't see me. By feeding, I mean reinforcing. Whatever I reinforce, feed, pay attention to, I'm going to see more of. That's very much true as we go about trying to build behavior chains. Because I think very often what I see happening is people are trying to push behavior out of an animal from the front end. They're trying to goad them into doing something instead of saying, you know what? I really want to create a very strong magnet, a very strong desire for the animal to get to the end of that behavior chain because they expect meaningful, generous reinforcement for doing so. It's functionally important for them to get to the end of that chain. And again, I think this is true for all training, but it seems especially true as we do these complex behaviors. You know, for all of us that have been training for a while, for all of us that do it professionally, it really is all about behavior chains. It's nice to be able to teach a discrete standalone behavior, uh, that separate movement that's a trick. That's nice. But really, all practical dog training that's doing service dog work or guide dog work or police dog or schutzend or agility or freestyle or nose work, it's behavior chains when you get to anything beyond sort of a standalone discrete trick. So I think we're all motivated to learn about them. But don't forget the basics, that it's coming down to that reinforcement. You know, the second to last paragraph in my book, Plenty in Life is Free, um, and I'm not going to talk much about it, but that very, very end of my book is that familiar parable. I think at this point, most people have heard this parable, usually attributed to the Cherokee, um, about a young Cherokee man who's brought before the tribal elders Um, And the elders are concerned about this young man's uh, aggressiveness, right? And so one of the elders takes the young man aside um, and says to him, you know, your, your anger, your aggression is understandable because all humans have within them two wolves. One of those wolves is generous and humble and open hearted. And the other wolf is aggressive and arrogant and selfish The two wolves are in constant battle with one another since neither is powerful enough to destroy the other. And the young man then asked the elder, but which of those wolves will win? And the elder replies, the one you feed. Now, again, I know many of you are familiar with that parable, but to me, that idea of my asking myself throughout the day, what is it I'm feeding right now? What is it I'm paying attention to? Which wolf is getting my attention? Because it's really easy to be distracted. So in that very philosophical sense, we pay attention to which wolf we're feeding as we live our lives. But as we're building these behavior chains, we go, what's getting Kashi to do that series of movements, the the guaranteed reinforcement when that crate door is shut. Each of Kashi's responses in getting to that point is functionally linked 
to that terminal primary reinforcer, right? That's the key. So the key in building these chains is we want each of those responses in the behavior chain to be linked to getting closer to that guaranteed expected terminal primary reinforcer. 